Hey everyone, welcome to Crest TV episode two. We are back. Uh, this time we're going to do a live link up. Uh, this is going to be interesting. Let's uh, see how this works. Uh, we are talking in this episode about our next events. Now, this week we are in Minneapolis. I'm going to say, Jason, is that right? Minneapolis? He's nodding at me. You can't see that yet. We're, we're live in Minneapolis and we're there before the show starts. So let's cross over live to Minneapolis. Uh, my colleague, Jason Mulder. And Jason, good morning. What time is it in Minneapolis? Just after 6.30 in the morning here in Minneapolis. You look, you look great for the 6.30 in the morning. What can I say? <laughs> Very much. Very much. So, so, for, yeah, so for anybody who, out there who doesn't know what the next events are all about, this is like a trade show in a box almost. We're, we're bringing the trade show, bringing the experience to our customers around the region. In North America, we're about to start in Europe. Tell us the kind of idea behind Next and, and kind of what it's all about. So this is actually our sixth city. So we've been doing this since middle of November. <clears throat> Just a quick layout. The idea is we want to bring the products out in person. So many people haven't had the opportunity to connect or see any of the new solutions. So the layout, if you will, is the same from city to city. Uh, and so again, we're here in Minneapolis. And so if we look at the room, just take a general shot. The way it's broken is we have our residential section. So all the new technology uh, that you'll find in the home. Uh, we have a partner section in the middle where we have some of our great partners are working with us here with their solutions on display. And then here on the right side, where we'll focus our time today in the commercial section. So we have everything ranging from the Intermedia products, NVX, and then a number of the products in the Flex line. Very, very cool. And, and so in North America, this is uh, it going into sort of hotel spaces and we're taking around. In Europe, we're going to be kicking this off and we've got a big truck. This is all going to be on the back of a, a big lorry and driving around, as you can see down below in the banner, there are 38 stops across Europe. And you've still got more to go in the States, I believe, after this one. So um, there, there's still more stops yeah. that you guys are doing over there. Absolutely. Yeah. The short term is we're here and then we're heading to Birmingham, Alabama in a couple of weeks. We have a stop that we just announced in Charlotte. So registration is open for Charlotte. And then after that, I think we're, we're already in planning for the next few cities uh, after that. But we're going to continue the tour. I mean, the great part is so many of these things, as we mentioned, customers haven't had a chance to see them in person. Uh, so we've had great attendance, great turnout, a lot of interest. So it's, it's a great great way to bring things to people, especially based on some concerns about travel, getting out and, and putting the tech in front of the customers is a great way to do this. Yeah, very, very cool. Now we're gonna do a bit of a, a shaky cam uh, Blair Witch style around the room there. Um, so uh, I'll get you, we're gonna go over to the first station and kind of give people a walkthrough. So if you can make it down to Minneapolis today or tomorrow, uh, so that's the 2nd and 3rd of March, uh, do make your way down there to the Doubletree Hilton. Uh, if you can't and you can't make it, this is going to be what you're missing um, or say a teaser to try and get you down there if you're new to the show by the way hit subscribe uh, give us in the comments tell us what you think or what you'd like to see or if you're going uh, say what you're uh, looking forward to see now Jason is doing an amazing job here uh, of steady cam um, going away slowly so the first thing I think we're going to look at is air media now we launched the new Air Media 3 on the show last week. Uh, we had Craig Durr from Wayne House and uh, Sam Kennedy kicking that off, but you're actually demoing it live there. And there's some other bits that we didn't talk about. I see there's a like a dongle on the wall there and you've got the Air Media boxes. Tell us exactly what people are gonna see with the wireless conferencing capabilities with Air Media 3 there. Absolutely, Neil. So there's a couple things to be aware of. First things first is that we have all of the new uh, next generation Air Media devices on display. 3,100, 3,200, 3,200 with Wi-Fi capability. Uh, the other item you see here, uh, as you pointed out, is our AMTX3. So this is going to be our transmitter that's able to plug into a device. You have touch controls to be able to present. That'll be on display here. We actually have it in a couple spaces. So if you want to see how it works, you're welcome to do that. The other thing, and I'll apologize to you, Neil, we are here so early uh, that our security policies have kicked in. So a lot of our gear is not out yet. Uh, so but in this space here, <laughs> yes. Well, <laughs> as you can see from, from any trade show, you might run into some of these challenges, right? Yeah. Maybe have a, a nice audio. But what we're doing here is we're actually selling wireless conferencing, the new feature you just talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have the kit built from Crestron on soundbar here. It's tied in with the Air Media. So if you had a laptop, we'd be here and we would be going through the wireless presentation feature. Uh, for wireless conferencing, excuse me, both wireless presentation and wireless conferencing. So the video camera, the microphone gets sent to the laptop wirelessly and the laptop speakers get sent back the other way wirelessly to the to the soundbar. So um, you're literally 
whatever meeting platform you're using, Teams, Zoom, whatever it might be, you're you're bringing your device and using those capabilities, but without any wires. That's correct. That's correct. Nice. Okay, cool. Uh, we'll take a we'll take a quick scan through the next section here. Some of the new features we're also showing in the NVX line. Okay. So we have all of our different NVX. These are our AV over IP solutions. Everything's on display. We have some demonstrations going with different types of content. Um, we actually have something that we we turn on. There's, here's where thing. Here's where the theft happens, Neil. Um, <laughs> is that we do have a section here for high res. Uh, and so these are high resolution support for gaming features. So if you come out, uh, you're welcome to come out and, and grab the Xbox X or the, the PlayStation 5 and, and play some games with us and see what that, uh, see what that looks cool. like. Interesting. Let's see who's going to be on the leaderboard later on for that one. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I've gotten <laughs> in the habit of bringing my own games with me for the shows too. So we what's have your a favorite. What's your, <laughs> what's your uh, game of choice? Uh, I'm a, definitely a FIFA fan. So okay. All has right. to be. Yeah, the one, the one game every year. So, <laughs> Very cool. uh, so this, this is an interesting section here, uh, Neil, that we're talking about. These are our, so as we, we kind of, this is our gap where we've moved into some of the Flex products. Um, there's a couple of things here I want to point out to you real quick. I'm going to try to set the tripod down here and, uh, and give you a little detail on these devices. Uh, so there's four, four devices here. We start with devices that are Teams phones. Mm -hmm. So here on the left, so these devices are going to be audio only devices. And then as we, we move over, we move into devices that are camera enabled. So these are Teams phones with camera capabilities so you can make both audio and video calls with the devices. Okay. Now, I, it's interesting. So the one on the right looks slightly different to the one on the, uh, on the left. The interface is different there. Tell me about this is the new Teams display. Talk, talk me through the differences between what, we, what customers may be used to with seeing on the, uh, the Flex phones and what's now coming with these new Teams display capabilities that we're, we're showing. So you're very perceptive to, to uh, find that, Neil. I'm surprised you could see that at this distance away with my camera. <laughs> we didn't press um, it at all, did we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the change here, this particular unit on then is, is, is it, it's a different category of device. So within the Microsoft realm, we have Teams phones uh, that can be both audio and video. But when you move into Teams display, I really think of this more as your personal assistant or your personal companion. It has all of the same calling capabilities that your solutions have uh, in, in a regular realm uh, of an audio video device. But what we now, now bring in with this device is your Teams experience. A lot of times customers are interested in these products because they offload some of the Teams capabilities off your desktop so you can really regain your productivity. This is the next step. So when you think about this device, we can chat, we can monitor our Teams notifications, we can participate in meetings from the device. Um, for me, I'll say this and give away one of my secrets. Uh, I have one of these devices. I always join my meetings with my display or my phone first. Uh, because I don't want to be late for a meeting, but I'm never on time wrapping up my previous meeting. So I use that transfer capability quite a bit with the devices. But it, the other part too, right? When you think about through the pandemic, we had all of these, um, well, these cases, right? Where, where calls kind of took over what we were doing, right? I can actually go into Teams here on the device and now as notifications, whatever I'm seeing is part of a team. But you think about productivity, how do I get my desktop back? How do I get back to what my job is? My job wasn't to be on calls, right? We were facilitating through calls. This is a great step in that direction because now you can move all those things to the side. Um, with all of the Teams phones, regardless of it being display or not, if someone is sharing content through a meeting, you're actually able to see it on the display as well. Oh, so wow, it's a great, okay. way to minimize, great way to minimize distractions with the devices. So that's the lineup. Teams display will be coming to our camera-enabled devices. One of the requirements for Teams display is that the, the device must have a camera. So if there's any customers in the field that have the, the video phones already, they'll have a free upgrade. And then we will be offering a dedicated Teams display SKU as well in the, uh, here in the short term. In the next couple of months, we'll make the announcement on that. Yeah, that's fantastic. I really like the idea of that. Again, for people that are either you know, working from home and want, as you say, that Teams assistant, seeing your calendar, seeing your chats coming in on a separate screen, a separate standalone device, being able to take calls on that, I think is brilliant as well. But then again, on, on things like hoteling, hot desking, as we're going back and building these spaces out in the meeting room, these kind of, uh, kind of glass pods, virtual phone booths and um, these kind of uh, single person uh, spaces that, that companies are putting into their offices. I think Teams Display would be great for that, the ability to come and sign in and again, get your information and, and add that second display uh, if you're just using a single display laptop um, in that space is great. So um, you can see that that's that's live on the, uh, the next floor there. Um, now we talked a lot about Microsoft, um, but we're not all about Microsoft. Uh, what else have we got there? 
So this is one I'm really excited to tell you about, Neil, because this is kind of a this is kind of a, a homebrew project, if you will, that uh, that I've been working on to try to demo. So this is a I'll be honest, this is a little bit of a busy station. I, I love to show this one in person on a couple of things. So first things first, this is a Zoom room. This is Crestron Flex running a Zoom room. And so we're running on Windows. So a couple okay. of key things. Number one, we're showcasing the Jabra the P50, the Panacast 50. This is a device that's going to be included with some of our Flex kits moving forward. So awesome. a couple of things when you're looking at the display here, Neil, I want to point out because there's some significant differences, right? What we're seeing here, and you can see me in the image, this is the feed from the camera itself. And so what we're showing customers, they can walk around. Uh, you, you can see that 180 degrees that you're getting from the camera as I stand, you know, basically that's awesome. right again. That's amazing to pick up on that. Yeah. It's one of the things too, you definitely want to see it. This is, this is yeah. becoming a problem. How far can you get around before it loses you? <laughs> <laughs> it's, wild. it's great but again this is something it was one of those it's kind of a tactile right you want to see it in person yeah yeah um, so that's part of the the part of the demonstration so at a base zoom room uh with the the panicast now the other part that's interesting and i'll kind of cut over here to the other side is that zoom has two components of smart gallery so this would be their uh, capability to you know, create equity and make sure that people are in frame. The interesting part about it is that with these solutions, we have what's called multi-stream. Mm -hmm. So multi-stream takes a singular camera image. And I want you to focus here on the one that says next smart gallery. Right. This is effectively simulating a, a camera feed or a camera input. What we're doing is feeding that particular image, and I'm using static images because if, obviously it's just me here today, so the future <laughs> wouldn't work for it. Um, so I've taken a bunch of static images. I've routed them through the Zoom room and basically told the Zoom, hey, this is your in incoming camera feed. So I'm firing these images at it. The great part about what you can do is you can see how Zoom then takes the individual components, analyzes them, and then provides the breakout. So I've got this demo loop running. Here's a great example. I'll step out of the way for a second on this. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Right, so the top left is the image, and then what you're seeing on the on the top right and the top and the bottom left, excuse me, those are the images that Zoom is actually breaking out as part of Smart Gallery multi-stream. Wow. So originally, this was a feature that was available on the Android solutions, mm -hmm. and now it's available on the Windows solution. So any of those Crest Crestron Flex systems that are out there running Zoom have this capability now. I love that. Here's the here's the key, Neil. It's not directly related to the camera itself. Because what I'm doing here is I'm just feeding in static images, so it's not dependent on the camera. So when the, the approaches are different, right? We want to help customers understand in terms of how the two platforms work, right? So it's a great conversation. But what we're doing is <clears throat> we're saying in the Zoom realm, if you have a very high quality camera with great optics, then it allows you to do a better job of parsing these pieces out. On the Microsoft team standpoint, they're actually asking the camera to perform the extraction or have those multiple streams. And then they're taking that information and they're moving it, moving around upstream. So it's good to know how each of the two solutions approach. But what we wanted to show is, you know, the great part about this is you really can kind of see how it goes about making the decision, how it goes about taking and selecting the, the individual users. And I do this little gray screen reset you can see here in the middle, just to make sure that the system knows that something has changed. And then you kind of see it reframe and move around. I mean, this is interesting. Again, you know, the, the whole reason for this is, you know, for the last 18 months, we've all been used to joining Zoom calls, team schools, and seeing people's torsos. We've been seeing this part of everybody's body. And now when we go back into formal meeting rooms, we're going to get these long bowling room tables. Uh, and that's not kind of what we've been used to. So why would we want to go back into the office? But these features from the likes of, of Zoom and, and obviously Microsoft try and solve these problems and bring that more equitable meeting experience to everybody. Again, whether you're being at home or whether you're being in an office, I love that. And I love the fact that it's um, it's coming to both the Windows and the Android solution um, for Zoom. Very, very cool. Now, um, the, the other side, going? go on. I was going to say both customers have great options. You know, one of the things we're spending a lot of time here at Next doing, though, is going through the educational process and helping the customers and letting them walk through the progressions to understand. Because we have, right, we have Zoom. So great point. Let's uh, let's take a look and let's look at the next station as we move back over and, you know, let's move into a team solution. <laughs> 
And we're, we're into, this is again, so we're going back into BYOD again. This is the idea that, you know, customers are coming back into, or users are coming back into the meeting space. And again, they've been used to driving the experience from their laptop, not from a, a meeting room solution. They want to come into Outlook, click join and run the experience from their laptop, just like they have been at home, but use the AV equipment, get that better than the built-in webcam and the built-in mic and speakers and use the screen and the, the camera. And in this case, we're doing this through a, a Mercury, I believe, rather than using the Air Media as we were in that first one. Right, right. And there's multiple approaches, right? You can have a customer working with Air Media who maybe they've not made the full commitment to the rooms. Maybe they have platforms that they use for the users, but that doesn't translate over. We've gotten to the point where there isn't a one size fits all, right? We, we help the customers figure out what their needs are, what their requirements are. That's a solution for certain customers. If you're a Zoom house, obviously we have a number of solutions there. Same thing with Teams. It's more about education, you know, helping the customers figure out what their choices are and then what fits their environment. We're not at a case where it's like, oh, that's the right solution for you because of all the different dynamics within the company. So for this solution, so this is a Teams-based room with BYOD capability. So the idea is that I have my interface, I mean, you're probably familiar, right, with our clock and the, and the normal Teams display look, or excuse me, Teams room look in this case, um, the display element for what the front room looks like. But we're in a case where we're operating normally as a Teams room until such time that someone needs to use another meeting service or presentation capability. So the device here, this is our Mercury Mini. Uh, you can see here that we have all the cables attached in this retractor that sits on the table, so it keeps it nice and clean. We have different options uh, within the BYD solutions. You can either use the USB connection and the HDMI connection from your device, or if you have the USB-C connection that can carry both. Um, but the idea would be is that when I want to change that uh, platform up or use it, I'll take these two connections, I'll bring them over, connect them to my device, and then my peripherals, so microphone, speaker from the Mercury, and then in this case, I have a Hudley IQ camera. Those will be routed back over to the laptop and then whatever platform service I'm running in the laptop, I have access to those devices now and the screen will change over to whatever's on my device. And that's completely automated. So again, if we, we've scheduled the room, we go in, we got the click to join capability with Teams, but if we're running down the corridor needing to join, you know, uh, whatever meeting it might be, we can bring it on our laptop, plug in those two cables and bang, we're, we're into that experience. And then when we finished, goes back to a Teams room and, and back to that uh, that general workflow that we're used to. Yeah. The, the other thing too that I think has also changed, Neil, if we look about, we go back two years, the customers that were converting or moving solutions, a lot of them were caught flat-footed in terms of what they had as an organization. 2022 is a little bit different already because what we're looking at are customers who are in progress or they're in transition. Mm -hmm. And we see a lot of customers look at the BYOD solutions because they don't know where they're going to land because companies are still making decisions in terms of what they want to use. But the other component too that we're finding is that we're finding for certain companies, they know they're moving to teams, but they may have legacy users that they're not ready to bring over yet. It isn't so much a case with BYOD. I think this is the misnomer of BYOD. Sometimes there's this assumption that BYOD means I want to support everything. Mm -hmm. And that's applicable in the air media products. But when we think about some of the, the solutions that are founded in a platform like a Teams room or a Zoom room, a lot of times it's just transition of the users. They just can't bring everybody over in one shot. And so they have to have cabling technology to help transition or migrate them over to the platform. Here's the thing about our BYOD solutions. If you're transitioned over and you no longer need it, just remove the cables on any of our solutions. Regular native room, it can be a Zoom or it can be a Teams room, whatever it is at that point. So you don't have those, you don't have those same concerns. A lot of different ways to help customers get where they need to go. Very, very good. Again, it's that choice. It's like that, that choice of being able to choose how you want to use it. And again, everyone, every user persona is different. Some people, I'm old school, I want a physical cable to plug in my laptop. You know, some people will be forwarding the invite to the meeting room um, and, and want to drive the experience in their, their, their meeting room. So yeah, love that, the fact that we give people uh, and give our customers the choice to, to use the rooms in different ways rather than being regimented in, it is just a Teams room and, and nothing else. Uh, where are we going next? Uh, you know what? Uh, yeah, uh, I'll come back to one thing. We're going to walk over to scheduling now. Okay. We've got a couple more stops here on the tour. Uh, I want to show a couple of things with scheduling. Uh, so one of the things about Crestron, obviously, we've been in the scheduling market for quite some time. We have a number of different providers, different solutions. Um, our products, uh, the scheduling panel specifically, offer you a native interface. So this is going to be an interface that's HTML5 based, configurable, customizable. 
Uh, this is running the, the typical exchange component where you're tying into your exchange environment. However, we also support all of our partners. So we have 22 miles, we have app space, we have Zoom. And the idea with our products is you simply flip them into the mode of choice that you're working with. So we have a lot of customers, you know, changing services. All you have to do is either log into the web interface of the device or use XIO Cloud, and you can change the provider mode and reuse the same hardware for whatever your scheduling needs are. Um, two things here I want to point out. Obviously, we have all our accessories on display. You can see the wall mounts, you can see the light indicators. We have our um, status signs, occupancy sensors for how those tie in. But two things here on the wall I want to show you now. So the first one is 22 miles is one of our partners uh, to use our RFID scanner. Okay. So the idea behind the product is if you think about a user with a badge, they can walk up and what it actually does, and I know you probably can't see it from distance, but it actually will take the persona or the identity, perform a lookup. And then when I go to book the room, it has my credentials. So wow. instead of a lot of those ad hoc bookings where we don't know or we can't mine the data, now we have that. We have a number of different partners that are adopting the RFID reader, brand new product from Crestron that ties in with the device. So we'll see some expansion there. Uh, the other thing I want to show you is that on the Zoom standpoint, um, Zoom has a new feature coming uh, in terms of, let me turn the camera a little bit so you can see it, Very cool. in terms of workspace reservations. So I'll show you really quick. Uh, and the idea here is that when we're dealing with uh, the Zoom, I'm able to go up and when I go to reserve the room, it actually shows a QR code. So if you're working inside of your, your application, the Zoom application on your mobile device, you can actually go up and scan that QR code because you're logged in your application, it takes your identity and then it reserves the room for you. So it's a great new thing that's that's um, coming from Zoom um, in the near future. But we're really showing all the different options. Again, this is a choice conversation, depending on what your needs are today, what your needs are tomorrow. You have all those options with the scheduling, scheduling panel, scheduling tools. Now, now we've looked at obviously the point products here. So we've looked at Air Media, we've looked at you know the phones, we've looked at Zoom and Teams rooms and scheduling all of our competitors have point products, but the value that, that Crestron brings is that entire room experience, you know, the ability to come in. Now, I'm setting you up while you walk around the corner. This is where it all comes together. This is where all of those elements that you've shown us come together to build that experience that when someone walks into the meeting room, the magic happens. So talk us through, again, how we've, we've brought this together and brought those elements together to provide this experience. No, great, great segue. Thanks for letting me walk. Now. There you go. So, <laughs> couple things we wrap up here, right? This, you're absolutely right. This is kind of the pinnacle. This is where everything comes together. The idea is that we have all the individual solutions, but they're not. You know, that's not the conversation. The conversation is here's my experience. So, what does this look like for myself as a customer? So, this particular, we built this little room within the uh, within the next tour, showcasing those products in that cohesive manner. So what we've done, and I'll show you a few of the highlights, Neil. The one thing that's actually funny, I've told many of our own team members, when they walk into the space, let the space describe itself, show the experience. Um, you don't have to show every single feature in it. We've got it pretty well loaded so that if somebody comes in and says, hey, I wanna see how this operates or acts, you can do that, uh, but that's not the goal, right? So the idea is we have this room, I have, you can see a little bit on the sides in the view, I have um, some shades, I have lights, I have displays. We have an occupancy sensor, right? Here's the idea. I walk into the room. I'm the customer. I come into the space. It knows I'm here. Shades will drop. Lights turn on. Displays light up, right? That's the automation. That's the experience that we're after is to show how all these pieces work together and how, as a user, you really don't have to be concerned about, you know, what the nuts and bolts are and how it works behind the scenes. We're creating that overall experience for you. Now, this room is a team's room. Uh, and so in this case, we have the dual displays. We are showcasing Holly's brand new L1 camera in the room as part of the overall solution. We have Air Media in the background. So again, the wireless uh, transmission device that we talked about earlier. I have my console here on the table to go ahead and join a meeting. Um, we've also added in a couple other features to the room as well. Um, we are leveraging Shure's MXA microphone. Love and that's how yeah. it um, has a partnership with Shure where we have the Shure software and telemix room certified on Crestron flex devices so there is no hardware dsp in this room we right. have that device directly to the uc engine and then from there we're routing audio back out to the speakers in the room so no hardware dsp in this space wow. um, the other thing I'll, I'll move the camera around really quick and show you <laughs> okay microsoft has also uh, made some new announcements recently there's some new features so we're doing some demos for customers so i'll actually go into a, a meet session here and one of the things now, what you'll see here is it's obviously early in, I don't have anybody in the meetings yet, 
uh, but we are showcasing the ability to see front row. So this room is front row capable, so we can bring that in and show that in a room. Very cool. Uh, the, other, the other thing we've also done here too, is there's a new feature with Microsoft Teams to have multiple cameras. And so you can see myself there on the screen. That's actually the camera that's mounted in the back of the room. Oh. So we can have those multiple camera solutions. It's a big change, primarily the educational customers. If you think about a room where you want to have both um, a front of room camera to be able to you know, look at the instructor, professor, whatever it is, and then you want to look at the audience to, to create that experience. Um, you know, it's a it's a nice feature for that too. But that's really kind of the hallmarks behind the space is that you don't have to think about these things. It's all there. It's available to you, right? And then you have the the automation components just make the experience easier. I love the fact that we're showing front row on the uh, on the flex. It's great to see uh, that we, we've got this new technology from Microsoft and we're rolling it out across the platform. The other, the other thing I really like, and again, I, I kind of set it up that, you know, again, a lot of our competitors will talk about the point products, the fact that we walked in, the screens light up, the lights come on, the blinds come on, you know, the fact that we're tying into the screens, and we're able to control the screens and even, you know, get management information from some of the screens, you know, is that tight integration. And, and as you said, the integration with Sure on the IntelliMix on the, uh, on on the microphones um, and then just all the other elements. It's not a point solution. This is a, a full room experience um, that feeds into the green story. It feeds into the, you know, again, energy saving, but also gives you that experience. So if someone came in on the last meeting and, you know, changed the channels, changed the inputs, started messing around with stuff, we reset all that. We give you the ability to walk in and have everything reset and ready for your next meeting, uh, which is just you know awesome. Um, so you're well, there. Go on. Okay. We, you know, we won't we won't be on camera long enough. But if we if we were to stay here and we were to walk out of the room, obviously we have the Shut reverse motion. Obviously, if I'm out of the room at a certain period of time, the system will recognize that the room's no longer in use. I'm not in a meeting right now, so the system won't hold high. I can monitor both the activity of the Microsoft Teams room as well as the eye sensor tie those two data points together and then decide when it's appropriate to turn the lights off and turn the display off. So but very, very cool. I'm not going to keep you on all day to take a look no, at that. No, no. It, well, I want people to go down there and I want people obviously to come to our next sessions. Again, this is a, a teaser to see what you can see. There's a lot more. There's a few secret products that you're showing there that we can't talk about on the, the public show. Um, so again, just as a teaser, there is some, some roadmap stuff as well. I think that's there um, that you guys are showing as well. And again, we'll be showing on those uh, next events as well. So you're there today, tomorrow, I believe. Uh, so they can come down and see you, talk to you. We'll be here uh, today, local 8.30 to 5. And then we'll be here tomorrow. There are uh, some educational sessions going on. We've got some seminars happening in parallel just next door uh, for a number of different uh, topics and varieties. So that's happening in parallel. We'll be here uh, for demonstrations, all kinds of other things too. I mean, there's a number of things I'd even get into, Neil. We have uh, Teams applications running on the scheduling panels. You know, we have a lot of people in the development or the the um, software community that also want to know how do I build on, how do I do things? We have those conversations happening, but yeah, we'll be here today and tomorrow. And then again, too, uh, if you're not able to make it out or, you know, we're not in your stretch of the country right now, obviously looking at those, those dates, I'm sure they're on your ticker there, Neil, for future, they will be soon, uh, for the future dates. We have two more planned, uh, after Minneapolis, Birmingham, and then Charlotte, and then more to be announced after that. Very cool. Jason, thank you ever so much for getting up nice and early. Uh, so you look great for 6 a.m. Very good. <laughs> just gonna jump in. Just, we should have customers arriving here in the next hour or so. We'll just get started. So if you have time, uh, absolutely would love to see you. And if not, if you can't make it here, love to see you at one of those or in your neck of the woods, Neil. Um, definitely see the truck as, uh, as we move across. Very cool. Jason, thank you ever so much. And thank you ever so much for joining us for this episode of Crest TV. The next tour is what it's all about at the moment, bringing the trade show, bringing the experience to you in your region, in your country, uh, to, to again, showcase these products. Again, you've got to see this stuff to, to believe it. Uh, and that's really what we're trying to bring to life. If you're new here, again, hit subscribe, uh, ring the bell, tell your friends, Crest TV is the place to be. And I will see you next week for next week's Crest TV show. Thanks for joining.